Hi, I'm Erica Gamet and welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to show you some of the preferences that I set when I'm working within the InDesign environment. Now, you might not use any of these preferences and I'm certainly not going to be able to cover all of them, but I just want to give you a taste of what can be set to make it a little easier and to make your work a little more efficient when you're working within InDesign. So let's go ahead and jump into InDesign and check them out. InDesign really lets us customize our workspace and our working environment so that we can work quicker and smarter and just more conveniently for us. And for that, we use our preferences. For me, when I'm setting a preference, I want to make sure that that preference stays or is sticky and continues to be my preference as I work. I don't want to have to keep resetting the same preference over and over again. So for me, I make sure that I set my preferences with no document open, generally speaking, because many of them will become the default behavior for all new documents going forward. Some, however, once I change them, no matter if a document's open or not, will actually become the default behavior. I can't keep track of which ones are which, so I generally do it with no document open. But to get to our preferences, we use Command or Control K to bring up the preferences, or we can go on a Mac under the InDesign menu under preferences, and on a PC we would go under the Edit menu to preferences. Now, what I'm going to do is I want to close up my document so everything becomes the default behavior. But I'm going to show you what happens right now because I have a specific uh, preference turned on, or at least yes, I do have that turned on. When I close this, I suddenly have this full screen thing saying, hey, what do you want to open? Well, that's a preference that I have set to show me recent files when no document is open. So we'll look at that in just a second. So right now, I'm going to go ahead and choose one that's there. I'm just going to click once on it and I have that open. So let's look at what that document was. So if I do Command or Control K, and remember, I'm going to do this with no document open, generally speaking. In fact, let's go ahead and do that. I'll close that. And even though I've got this sitting here, this is actually just a panel showing me items. It's just that it opens full screen. So I can still do Command or Control K to bring up my preferences and no document is actually open. So what is that preference? These are the two start, or start and recent file workspaces. This was in a recent version, I'm not sure, somewhere in 2015. Uh, they changed this as one of the preferences that you can choose. So I can show the start workspace when no documents are open. And I can also show recent files workspace when I'm opening a file. So these are, again, just two new workspaces that are there. They turn off as soon as you click on something and it resets it to whatever workspace you're using. Now, I haven't covered workspaces yet. I can certainly cover that in a future video if you'd like to see how I set up my workspaces and why I use the workspaces that I do and how to switch between them. So just let me know if that's something you'd like me to cover. Otherwise, we can uncheck those so those don't even show up as we're opening and closing documents. In this preferences dialog box, you notice I have a whole list over here of items. These are your preference panes. So we've got the panel, which is the whole thing, and the panes, which are the items off to the side. So under the general is where we set those spaces that are there. I'm going to go to the next one, which is interface, and I'm going to choose what I want the color theme to look like. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this really quickly, and I want to make sure that I'm back in a document so we can see the changes that are being made. All right, so I'm in this document here. Command or Control K brings up my preferences dialog box and go back to the interface pane. And several versions ago, InDesign had this option of changing the color theme or the whole background, what the panels look like. And light is the one that we've always used. And for me, that's the one I continue to use. I have a vision issue that uh, gets really affected if I have light type on dark color, but I love that I'm able to choose this option. So I can choose medium light, medium dark, or full dark, or I can come back in here and use this little slider and choose anything in between. Now you notice as I'm changing that, the pasteboard of this area off the artboard is changing along with the theme. And that's because we have match pasteboard to theme color turned on. I can deselect that. And then as I play with this slider, you'll notice the pasteboard remains the same as the artboard. Click that back on, set it back to light. That's how I'm used to looking at it. And that's the way I, le I leave it all the time. The other thing I can do is I can turn on or off transformation values. So I'm still in this interface pane, show transformation values. Let's turn that on and see what happens. 
If I'm working with a shape, for instance, this green rectangle, and I move it around, I get a listing of telling me what the width and height is of that rectangle. I find that that information, along with my SMART guides, telling me when things are the same width as something else, or the same height as something else, and then when things are centered, I find that's just way too much information. But if you like that, for instance, if you're using the rotation tool, and I rotate, it also tells me the angle that that item is rotated at. I don't like that. I turn that off. I just feel like it's too much information. Commander Control K, go back to the interface pane, and deselect Show Transformation Values. In that same interface pane, down at the bottom, we have live screen drawing. So for me, this is great. I like to see what I'm doing when I'm moving an image. So I have it set to delayed, which I believe is the default. That's how things have always worked. So that's how I kind of leave it. Um, I don't know if there's actually an um, advantage to or disadvantage to turning on immediate, why you wouldn't just turn on immediate. I just don't because it doesn't feel like it always has. So what the immediate does is if I grab an object, I'm gonna use the content grabber here, and I just move my picture, I can see a ghosted image right away um, of the full image so I can see how that's being cropped. I'm gonna undo that, jump back into the preferences, and come down here to the interface pane again and choose delayed, which is what I normally have. And so when I go to move an image now, if I just grab it and move it, I can't actually see where that item is moving until I let go of the mouse button and see where that ended up moving. So the delayed, if I click and hold for a second, now I get that live screen drawing as I move that object around. And again, I just leave that the way it was because that's the way I'm used to it and it just seems to work with my particular workflow. The next one is up here in the type pane. So again, I keep doing Command or Control K to bring up the preferences panel. And we have the option to triple click to select a line, which I believe is on by default. So I'm gonna turn that on. And when I'm working in a text frame, I'm gonna double click just to, or click inside the text frame just to activate my type cursor. When I click once, obviously it moves the cursor. If I double click, it selects the word. If I triple click in this case, it selects the entire line. Now, if we're working in prose like this, was probably not a reason I would want to select an entire line. But if you're working in single line paragraphs, maybe in a list or, or, or a directory or something like that, there might be a reason for it. But I can turn that off because what happens is if I want to select an entire paragraph, now I have to quadruple click. So I have to click four times and not hit five, because if I do, then I select everything that's there. Hit four times just to select that paragraph. So again, I can turn that off so that now when I triple click, that selects the paragraph. It jumps over that triple click select a line thing. All right, let's jump back into the preferences and come back down into type. And at the very bottom, we have this object called Smart Text Reflow. Now, if you're not using Smart Text Reflow, I would say deselect it. And I have it turned off right now because I'm currently not using it in this document. Um, if you're not used to it, what it does is it adds pages as you're typing and removes them if the pages become empty. If you're using it, great. And in fact, I can do a future video on that. Also, if you'd like, explain all the ins and outs of using the Smart Text Reflow and what all these preferences mean. But for me, if I'm not gonna use it or if I haven't used it at all, I could find that quite frightening when it starts adding pages and worse, if it starts deleting the empty pages and if you've got automatic numbering on and you've got right and left hand uh, master pages, that can be confusing and also a little frightening when your pages just disappear. So if you're not using it, deselect Smart Text Reflow, turn it on and learn it if you want to use it. It's actually a really cool feature. One thing I get asked a lot, why is my document using pikas and points? Well, that's because that's the default InDesign comes with. I don't use pikas and points anymore. I used to in printing. A lot of people that are in printing do. It's based on inches, so if you're not even working in inches, I can't even imagine how confusing pikas and points must be. But let's change that. Let's change it to something that we like to use. I'm gonna come down to units and increments and look at the ruler units, horizontal and vertical, and just tell it each one, each ruler, what it needs, what units it needs to be using. I'm gonna choose inches for both of those. The great thing is if I do need to use some other form of measurement, say centimeters, I wanna move something really, really small, maybe millimeters, I can right click or control click on a ruler and change for this one document only, the ruler in this particular, this. Uh, in the vertical ruler or the horizontal ruler individually. 
going to turn that back so it goes back to inches, which is what I'm using. And the last one is display performance. I'm going to come all the way down here to the display performance pane. And I did cover this in a previous video called uh, Fixing My Jaggy Images, something along the lines of jaggy images. When you look at an image on screen and it's jaggy, how do I fix that? Well, we can set the, the default view to high quality so you don't see those jaggy images. I tend to keep it set at typical. In that video, I do cover what all these different preferences mean and uh, what may or may not work best for your workflow. So check that out. If you're tired of seeing jaggy images, you can also just turn this on to high quality, but there are some cons to doing that as well. So I'm gonna leave that set as typical. Basically that will show me sort of a lowish resolution uh, version on screen of what my images look like. Remember everything for display performance is simply controlling how the images look on screen, not when you export it to PDF and not when you print it. So it's just a visual for you while you're working. Those are a couple of preferences that I like to set. You might find that there's other ones that are useful to you. You might find that there's ones that you need to turn on and off. Like for instance, this triple click to select a line. Um, that may be something I turn on when I need it and generally leave off most of the time. So I hope that helps, gives you a couple of ideas of how you might set things up to work a little faster, a little more efficiently, or just a little more comfortably when you're working with your files in InDesign. Those are just a few of the preferences that I like to set when I'm working with InDesign. You may have more, obviously there's plenty that I wasn't able to cover. Let me know though in the comments below if there's one that maybe confuses you and you'd like me to clarify a little bit. Or maybe there's one that you like to set that I didn't cover and you want to let me and everybody else know about that. Be sure to leave that in the comment, the comment section below as well. And as always, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I put up new videos with tips, tricks, and tutorials on Wednesdays. And if you subscribe, you'll get notified when those are up and ready for you to view. If you want to contact me about anything else, be sure and use any of the social media links off to the side over here. You can also click on my name below and that takes you to my website. You can contact me that way. That's it for this video. So until next time, bye-bye.